the 2020 Township Goals Action Plan. Mr. Opsmer. I move for that the attached 2020 Meridian Township Action Plan. Support. Okay, moved by Opsmer, supported by Wazinski. Uh, these are the items that we discussed at a prior meeting, uh, which were then amended in accordance with our conversation and the language we have in front of us came about because of those uh, the, that conversation, those amendments. Anyone want to talk about it or are we all set? Ms. Jackson. I have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, I note that, let's see if I can find it. Um, we talk about expanding our solar energy capacity and we talk about uh, in addition to continuing to talk with MSU about um, a, a partnership in a, a planned project there, we talk about it installing two 20 kilowatts <coughs> photovoltaic, photovoltaic panels in the township. And I want to know, have we decided where? Deputy Clerk, I mean Deputy Manager. <laughs> we had. Uh, uh, <laughs> I did. It's all right. And I wear a couple different hats, everywhere. so it's all good. Right. I work everywhere. Right. Um, the areas we're looking at currently are the service center and the South Fire Station. Uh, okay. But we haven't done the analysis to say that those would work exactly. But we're, we're really focusing on some rooftop. Um, solar panels mm -hmm. and we think those are good candidates for us but again uh, we you know originally our, our goal was the the roof here and as you get into the details uh, we had to you know do a 180 but uh, that's kind of where we're thinking right now but, but at being added to this particular document it means that we're going to put some up Absolutely. In this year absolutely when okay the board makes a goal when we like find two okay. years ago when you wanted that solar panel just, just, there needed, it is. just needed clarification. Yep. That's all. Um, Another point. Uh, the other point I think is is probably going to be a silly question, but <laughs> the the new fire truck that we're going to um, purchase um, submit a purchase order for it during this year. Um, it, it, the planning for that does take into account our changes in the height. Um, of buildings going in at um, actually in our uh, what do you call them? Which like those areas, those, those the specialized areas. Sure. So Pika's yes. right. I can have the chief speak to it, but again, well, this is the year that we'll be putting those specifications together, okay. identifying the needs of the truck, um, and again. Um, next year is when we have the, the fourth payment um, moving into the budget to actually be able to pay for it. Okay. But this is the year where we, we do those detail works. I'll let Chief speak to that. Yeah, so we've got a committee right now. We've looked at uh, about four different models that are out there, different manufacturers, trying to get an idea of what we want. <clears throat> so we get the best bang for our buck, if you will. We don't want to overspend. We don't want to underspend. We want to get a piece of equipment that's going to last us a good 20 years. Um, we're uh, hoping to have a purchase order April, May, uh, so it goes into next budget year, so we the rest of the millage dollars would cover the cost. Uh, I think we're pretty close now, but we might not be right there. Uh, in regards to the size, so um, I know previously they've talked about a, a large tower, which I don't believe we need, uh, regardless of the size of the buildings going us. The reason I say that is there's three towers around us that we can call for mutual aid uh, as well as five other ladder trucks around us that we can call for mutual aid so the intent with the vehicle we're buying is going to be somewhere between a 70 and 80 foot uh, what we call a quint which it can run as an engine or as a ladder and it'll be single axle so we don't beat it up if you do a dual axle it wears the tires out and the axle and everything um, so it gives us a dual purpose uh, vehicle so we can run it as an engine as well as a ladder truck Thank you. All of that information is information I can use. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> so, so a 70 to 80 foot is, from a story point of view, what is that? Yeah, so it depends on the setback. Now, um, depends on how close you can get to the building. Generally at a fire, when we're going to set up a, a large ladder uh, for a structure fire in some commercial building, you gen generally set up on the corners for, out of the collapse zone. So it depends on the setback. If you can't get the truck 
closer than 40 feet, you lose 40 feet of that ladder right now. So we back it up, set it up as close as we can get, and whatever that setback is, is the feet you lose in your ladder. So, um, for instance, the new uh, high rise, well, the five story that'll be going up at Okemos and Hamilton. Um, generally on that, those, depending on where the fire would be, if we, s s let's say, set the ladder up on the corner of Hamilton and Okemos heading, or facing northwest, um, depending on how close we get to the building, you're gonna lose 20, 30, 40 feet of ladder. And what is a five-story? What is that height-wise? Um, it's about 12 to 14 feet a story, I believe, okay. consistently. So if you go five stories, you're looking at uh, 60 feet. Okay. Plus. So the, the truck you're anticipating would be tall enough to be managing the fire while maybe some truck from another jurisdiction came in? That yeah, was definitely. Taller. And any commercial fires, we the, the recommendation for, for a commercial fire is about 40 <laughs> firefighters. Okay. Uh, house fires are about 14 minimum. So for a structure fire in a commercial building, which a high rise or a, 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 a multi occupancy like a apartment building would be considered a high rise or a commercial building, we'll be calling everybody. Okay. All right. Any, anybody else have any questions? Mr. Officer. Uh, just a quick question for uh, Derek on. Thank you, Chief. The MSU to Lake Lansing phase one and two. So are, is phase one, are we still calling that the MSU basically to Grand River? Correct. Connection over the Red Cedar? Right, so that's really the bridge. Yeah. Uh, the most expensive portion of it. Yeah, know. and the footings and to then, get over the Red uh, Cedar. And then the easements behind the, the, the property along the Red Cedar, which then kind of brings you back up, winds you back up towards Park Lake, where we then get you across Grand River and then phase two kind of works towards uh, the Riseburg land preservation area. So we're looking at doing that kind of work around the Red Cedar in the fall? Yep. Okay. Yep. And then phase two, is that what you referred to earlier as we're technically calling it phase 2B because we did the boardwalk? Right. So Just the pathway phase widening. two is the Riseburg north side of Grand River heading towards the, the service center in a northeast direction, kind of through township Oh, township through the property. land preserve. Yep. Okay. Right. And then 2B is where we're going to grab it there at Okemos Road where it uh, exits out of yep. and take that existing pathway and widen it so it meets AASHTO standards. Okay. And take that all the way up to the uh, inner urban. Okay. And then to the south will be the boardwalk. And we don't anticipate weather issues starting at that kind of work in the fall? It's just made the, the way the engineering and everything's going to work out. So uh, The engineering isn't going to be ready until then? Exactly. Okay. So, so it could be something that could get pushed into 2021, Absolutely but correct. we've got the funding. So. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Deshane. I, I like the, the these goals. The first one I like... <clears throat> specifically because it is so exacting or specific that we, to fulfill our August 2019 promise to allocate and account for 100% of the local road bonding in an effective and transparent process, a minimum we shall complete 26.94 miles of local road work and increase our PACER ratings from 448 to 5.08. We just like the deputy manager to give us an update. I know we're in the process of trying to find a new engineer that will be managing this process. Um, how's that process coming along? So over the holiday, we had a couple candidates with some interests, um, and there was one we actually were pretty interested in. But as sometimes happens, once they find out their current employer finds out that they're leaving, they make them an offer they can't refuse. So <laughs> we're kind of back to uh, re-advertising for that position. But in the meanwhile, we're still moving forward. Uh, we have consultants that we utilize. Um, in fact, the last several weeks, uh, if you live on one of the streets that's going to be receiving some work in 2020, where they're out actually doing some coring of the roads um, to identify the uh, the depth of the asphalt, the depth of the, the sub base, and that kind of thing to help with that engineering work. So that will then continue to proceed. And ideally, we'll have a our own dedicated road engineer on board uh, at some point in the near future, uh, you know, to continue to continue to move our program forward. But we'll we'll be utilizing in-house uh, staff and uh, consultants uh, to manage the project. Uh, whatever we need to do to get it done. Great. Um, the second goal here, the that we'd be an active partner in the redevelopment of downtown Okemos and downtown Hazlitt is important. We, we're all aware of what's going on in downtown Okemos. We're going to see some elevation this year. Um, downtown Hazlitt 
um, obviously needs more work, more development, and our residents in the north half of the township are very curious, and they certainly don't want us to forget about the problems and the blight that's going on there, particularly on the south side of Hazlitt Road at, at Marsh Road. C um, is an interesting goal of ours. I think it's going to require more work and more effort on the board's part than it first appears. Enhance township diversity and inclusion initiatives that promote equal opportunity in the workforce, recruitment, employee retention, flexible work environment, and housing opportunities. I think we purposely made that a very dense goal, but that you could actually expand that to several goals if we wanted to be more specific. We, we put a lot into that goal, but there are a lot of different initiatives that will likely come out of that. So I'm, I'm excited about the, the that goal as well. Overall, I'm real happy with this list of goals, different than past years. Um, a in particular, last year our goal was to find the funding mechanism for our road f to fix our roads. This year it's execute the plan to fix our roads. That's a different goal, but nonetheless very important for this board to be active in, in monitoring that and um, working with the manager because he'll be the hands-on um, with the deputy of making sure this road work gets done. Those are my comments. Ms. Jackson. One more um, uh, from me um, relative to goal number, goal D. Are we at 73 emergency responders at this point? Um, and does that include police and fire right. alone? So the 73 is our police and fire uh, personnel. Mm -hmm. And that number fluctuates depending I on. I know that. it does. Right, right. But so that is our goal, 73 um, throughout the year, though that will fluctuate. But that is our goal. But my question was, wh where are we relative to that goal at this point? Do you know? Uh, okay. Actually, the chiefs are here. They may be able to do a quick count for us uh, where you're at. So I think they're counting, Which you counting can right add. now. <laughs> so for the fire department, we have 32 in suppression, so firefighters and then four administrators. So you have 36 people, all of whom would qualify for this in terms of the abilities. Correct. Okay. We have 39 sworn police officers right now until Friday. <laughs> I have one retired. <laughs> so we're above the number. Okay. Well, okay. 73 must refer to the, the sworn, maybe. And not the administrator. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, and although all the, although they can serve. Although they're all important. Yes. Yeah. They all serve a critical <laughs> function. Right, and they can serve an emergency if needed. So. Inscription. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else, Ms. Jackson? That's it. All right. Anyone else have a question on these or a comment? I would have one comment. It's kind of a mundane one compared to all the ethereal stuff we've been talking about. Under E, uh, which is uh, the signage uh, at the uh, main entrances to the township, I would ask that we try to get as, uh, and we may have to relocate from our current sign locations, get as close to our boundary as possible. For example, on Grand River, we are substantially east of our boundary uh, where our current sign is. And I know that there's a fairly new building uh, that we approved just a couple years ago right at the boundary that might might be willing to be a new location for that. Uh, coming down Marsh Road from the north, again, we're, we're sort of substantially south of our boundary. So if we could look at that and see if it's possible, I know there's financial implications, sure. but sure. Uh, I, I think it does our better citizens uh, a service to have our boundaries marked at the appropriate spot. Fair enough. All right, anything else? Okay, then we are going to vote on uh, approving or adopting, rather, these uh, goals, this action plan. And I think we can just do that by a voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 6-0. Thank you.